Hello, I'm Karen Massey with the California High Speed Rail Authority. Today, we're talking to Gary Kennerly, an engineering manager at WSP, the rail delivery partner for the High Speed Rail program. He's also the director of projects for Northern California. Phase one of High Speed Rail is gonna run 520 miles from San Francisco down to LA Anaheim. Gary, I understand that much of that's gonna be at grade level or some of it's gonna be elevated, but some of it's gonna go underground. So how much of phase one is gonna be in tunnels and where would that primarily occur? So overall in phase one, we have approximately 57 miles of tunnel. Uh, most of those tunnels are in the mountain regions, uh, typically are located in Northern California in the Pacheco Pass, and then in Southern California through the Tehachapi, south of Bakersfield, and also the San Gabriel Mountains as we come into the LA Basin. Gary, how long will the longest tunnels be? Uh, generally, we try and keep the tunnels short, but there are two quite long tunnels we have. One in the Pacheco Pass, which is actually currently the longest tunnel, which is about 13 and a half miles from either portal end to end. Uh, also down uh, in the St. Gabriel's, we have another long tunnel, which is about 12.8 miles. Uh, so those are the two longest tunnels. Uh, and generally we try and keep them short um, just for ease of engineering. How steep will those mountain grades be? And how fast will high-speed rail be able to go as they go up and down those mountain grades? So typically we try and design our alignment as flat as possible, generally up to about one and a half percent grade. Uh, however, in the mountain regions, we do have to go steeper uh, and we go up in the steepest areas up to about th almost 3%, 2.8% is our steepest grades. Uh, and generally we are looking to run our trains at full speed up to 220 miles an hour. But over those sustained long grades, the trains do slow down, uh, but we'll still be able to achieve speeds of over 180 miles an hour, even with those steep grades. What research is being done in earthquake prone areas and have we learned anything about mountain travel from other countries that have high speed rail? So as you can guess, um, understanding the geologic conditions is very important when constructing tunnels underground. Um, so we are approaching our investigation in really three phases. First of all, we start with a desktop study looking at what other people have studied in the area to identify the area's concern, especially uh, for seismic zones, active fault zones. Uh, that's generally followed up with some preliminary geotechnical investigation, uh, especially in areas where we don't have information, which is quite common in the more mountainous regions since there has not been much construction. We go in and do a few pilot holes to really characterize the type of ground that we'll be building through. Um, and then ultimately there will be a much more detailed geotechnical survey as part of the final design in order to make sure we do select the appropriate construction methods and have a, a full understanding of the ground conditions we'll encounter. Following up on your second portion uh, regarding experience worldwide, overall on high-speed rail we have really been working to use the best practices and knowledge from construction throughout the world, including other seismic areas such as Japan and Taiwan. Uh, we've also taken uh, experience from Europe as well. Um, and we use that experience to really plan ahead, but really the, the final design will come when we have that full geotechnical information, because every tunnel really is its own unique design and that's based on the ground conditions. Gary, what's being done in terms of passenger and worker safety and what's being planned in case there's an emergency while the train is underground in a tunnel? So, of course, very concerned when we design our tunnels regarding safety uh, for both passengers and during construction. Um, during construction, uh, most of the work to safety is related to uh, proper ventilation and appropriate construction methods. Uh, making sure we deal with groundwater that may enter the tunnels during construction. Uh, and that is really dealt with through, as I mentioned before, the uh, geotechnical information and designing the tunnel uh, boring machine or tunnel construction methods based on those ground conditions. For operational, um, ideally uh, that uh, our trains go at 220 miles an hour and we really don't want the trains to stop in the tunnel. 
uh, even if there is an emergency. The first response would be to keep the train running, to get it out of the tunnels, and then either stop at the portals or some other safe refuge or a station. Um, our trains are designed uh, to have very low risk of fire, which is the big concern in tunnels, uh, through use of non-flammable materials and fire suppression on the trains. However, should a train become disabled in a tunnel, uh, we have in each of our tunnels, we do twin bores, so each direction is in a separate tunnel with cross passages between each of those tunnels at about 800 feet apart. So should a train become disabled, it will come to a stop. People will leave the train, go through the cross passages into the other tunnel bore, and that gives them a place of refuge that wouldn't be smoky or uh, until another train could come along and evacuate them out of the tunnel. Gary, thank you so much for all of the work that you're doing on High Speed Rail, and especially with these tunnels and making sure that everybody's going to be safe. If you want more information, be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms.